right. Page 10, a middle of the page. I had always believed in a power greater than myself. I had often pondered these things. I was not an atheist, few people really are, for that means blind faith in the strange proposition that this universe originated in a cipher and aimlessly rushes nowhere. My intellectual heroes, the chemists, the astronomers, even the evolutionists suggested vast laws and forces at work. Despite contrary indications, I have little doubt that a mighty purpose and rhythm underlay all how could there be so much of how could there be so much of precise and immutable law and no intelligence? I simply had to believe in a spirit of the universe who knew neither time nor limitation, but that was as far as I had gone. With ministers and the world's religions, I parted right there when they talked of a God personal to me, who was love, superhuman strength, and direction. I became irritated, and my mind snapped shut against such a theory. To Christ. I conceded the certainty of a great man, not too closely followed by those who claimed him. His moral teaching, most excellent. For myself, I had adopted those parts which seemed convenient and not too difficult. The rest I disregarded. The wars which had been fought, the burnings and chicanery that religious dispute had facilitated made me sick. I honestly doubted whether, on balance, the religions of mankind had gone, had done any good. Judging from what I had seen in Europe and since, the power of God in human affairs was negligible, the brotherhood of man a grim jest. If there was a devil, he seemed to be the boss, universal, and he certainly had me. But my, my friend sat before me, and he made the point-blank declaration that God had done for him what he could not do for himself. His human will had failed. Doctors had pronounced him incurable. Society was about to lock him up. Like myself, he had admitted complete defeat. Then he had, in effect, been erased from the dead, suddenly taken from the scrap heap to the level of life better than the best he had ever known. How's that? Great. Sounds like a train just uh, left oh, the Oh, yeah. Side. I'll go ahead and mute. That was good. <laughs> yeah that's was an well hello everybody nice to see everyone tuesday morning in northern california yeah he's just sharing his take on stuff and obviously i uh i have an intimacy with the thing that his friend, I think that was Ebby, right? Ebby was there, who had seemed to have gotten struck sober, and he was on fire. So, but my friend sat, sat before me, and he made the point blank declaration that God had done for him what he could not do for himself. His human will had failed. Well, that's the experience that I went through. Yeah, so I'm in complete agreement there. Now, the other stuff before, I don't know, you know, everyone has their opinions. I've always had a sense of something. So maybe other people live without having a sense of something. And that would lead to them having different understandings. Yeah, but the same effects can occur. They can, they can be, you know, they can be sober and stay sober yeah so in in this case it it uh the idea that something had done for me what i couldn't do for myself has become the theme mostly of this life since sobriety because i uh truly i had been on a terrible run a spiral down after my last attempt or an attempt to get sober by going into a program called Delancey Street and staying there for two years from 85 to 87. And in those two years, you know, I showed the effects of thriving in an institutional setting. If there, if something could be placed between me and me, I did pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> but it had to be forcibly done. I couldn't 
go in that direction. I couldn't uh, fit myself around circumstances. I was fitting them around me. So in that structure, I could thrive. The problem was with that was uh, when I left the structure, its, it's uh, influence was incredibly great because the first week I started to have rumblings of irritability, restlessness, and discontent that led to a lot of mental activity that started to propose to me what I was like, what it was like, what it was going to be like. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I didn't seem to have a defense against it. And I, some, I had made some, uh, it had sown the seeds earlier, even in the program, because I remember I had come to a conclusion that narcotics was the problem, which was true, yeah one of the symptoms of the problem, but to me, the problem at the time. And and then just very nonchalantly said to myself, but I could probably drink, which I didn't run up by anybody in the program, just sort of filed it away, went on about my business. And that, that egg exploded later. And um, after two years, I did what they had asked me to do uh, I had, they had a, like a big, I remember a three day thing where they kept you up a lot at the end to really, you know, create some kind of an effect. I went through that and I graduated, found a place to live outside of Delancey street. And, um, very quickly thereafter, something took me over that, that lower power. I would say it derived, you know, it, it, it abides in the mental activities. And uh, it started playing a lot of advertising and I bought the product once again. I went to a bar, the bar led to a drink, the drink led to looking around the bar to see if anyone sold cocaine. I bought some Coke, went out to my car, did some cocaine and uh, lost the car the next day. And it was like uh, Jack Nicholson in The Shining coming through that bathroom door at the end. Here's Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, it was, uh, it was like having a TV series and then the bad guy shows up two years later. <laughs> Delancey Street. <laughs> and then the, the bad guy shows up episode three. <laughs> <laughs> so I, uh, it truly felt like I believe it is like, which is being taken over by something. Yeah. Some people call it a demonic possession. I like to call it a parasitical movement. Yeah. Uh, that thing led me on a 10 month run and, uh, pretty much as the run proceeded, uh, I was completely demoralized, yeah, because I had given it my best shot two years, went to college. It seemed like everything was in the rearview mirror. Delancey Street told me everything was going to go work well from now on. And uh, those sort of ideas gotten broken on the rocks of this reality of addiction. So I gave up really completely. And so I was just drinking. I came out of a blackout. I had left San Francisco I, without any intention of leaving San Francisco. I just went out St. Patrick's Day. But somehow I left San Francisco. I ended up a couple hours north of San Francisco. And I, you know, like when you come out of a blackout, it's like parachuting behind enemy lines. I just came into a situation, had no idea what was going on. I saw that was there was a person across from, from me. I looked outside the window as a trailer we were in, and we were at a hang gliding park airport in Calistoga, Long uh, North California, passing a bottle of Royal Gate vodka. I had no idea what had happened, but I sure had plenty of ideas of what was going to happen. So I was just drinking and then uh, passed it 
looked at him. My head had an observation of him. He had a big head and bulbous nose and varicose veins. My head's observation of him was he was a bum. And then lo and behold, he was looking at me like I was a bum. Seemingly, that's how I read it. And at that moment, something happened that I could never initiate it, nor could any other you in power. And I wouldn't even know how to initiate it. Just the whole system stopped because if I tried to initiate initiate it the system would be active yeah so i can't but the system itself which was initiating enough got stopped and then something came in it was just like a news flash on a screen the screen got cleared off like an etcher sketch and the news flash was i'm fucked you know and it was so it was so profoundly obvious that the muscles of denial just couldn't flex anymore. They just they just drooped and the information came in. And one of the first parts was I'm not managerial quality, you know, it's very clear. And uh, the funny thing is that power that initiated that set off a train of circumstances that brought me to my first AA meeting that night. Yeah, it was incredible, really. And then uh, Life just took a fucking 180 degree turn and started going another way. (laughs) Seriously, you know, some of the times I maybe felt like I was being dragged by that other way. Some of the times I was happily looking out the windows going the other way. It didn't matter. I was going the other way. (laughs) It was it was a done deal. (laughs) Yeah. So and uh, thank God I liked it. I was I was feeling so good. Uh, just sitting and listening to people's stories and putting up chairs and just, you know, looking forward to a like a latte <laughs> instead of, you know, like a half a pound of cocaine or shit. <laughs> it was, the the uh, targets were pretty easily met, you know. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, it's just been gone. It went on that way. It has been going on that way for a long time. And, uh, I don't, you know, I think as long as time is going on, it can go on, seriously. So, uh, yeah, it's like a a new wave crested in in the ocean of life and it hasn't broken. It just just ride it for years and years and years. And while you do, a lot gets revealed, I feel. And in my case, I saw... uh, I listened to people like Joe and Charlie from the guys who did the, used to do the big book seminars. I listened to some people, a lot of people. And like, I remember I was at in Texas, supposedly doing a talk there only a couple years sober. And a guy shared about tradition. I think it is too, which is as a loving God expressing itself through our group conscience. And he said it as if there's a spirit there that, is producing something that the that the uh, that the some couldn't produce. Yeah, all the individuals couldn't produce what was produced through the us. And I really, I've never lost that spirit in that tradition. That's how I feel every time I say it. Yeah, and things like that started to happen. And I saw, you know, self is what has defeated us. Yeah. And I feel the root, the real root of the problem, you know, it has a lot of levels of its own hell, so to speak. And one of them is active addiction and alcoholism. But it's not the, it's not what sets up the platform. It's actually a seeming solution to the effects of the platform. Yeah. I mean, when I first started getting loaded, it was the solution. Yeah, it wasn't the problem, obviously. So, yeah, and then it's still, when it was seen as the problem, it really wasn't the problem. <laughs> it was just a bad solution, yeah, that fed the problem. I, who knew? So, but I saw uh, alcoholism as like a foreign installment or something. And then down the road, I saw that alcoholism really 
there's a bigger bug that alcoholism lands on, which is this identification as self. Yeah, the bondage of self, I think, is the real bug. And let's say alcohol is like a nasty flea <laughs> that thrives on that bug. Yeah, so the, we think we think, oh, we, everything will go great if we get rid of the flea, but it doesn't. Yeah, because the flea is really being fed by the bug. So what is that bug? I feel it's the act of being identified as self that we are not doing, but the head is all day. And if we have faith in the head, it feels like we're doing it all day. Yeah. And then that feeling that you're doing it all day, if it tries to undo it, it's just more you doing it all day. Yeah, there are some things you learn about how the system, this sort of system of self carried carrying alcoholism, what it does to sustain itself. Yeah, you see self can't get out of self as such an incredible descriptive observation by members of recovery. Yeah, a lot of us have tried to get out of self as self. And it was so accumulative, it became something that's shared and warned about in the program of AA. It's not in the big book, but it's one of the most powerful statements I feel of recovery is self can't get out of self. Because it totally matches my sense of the problem, which is the act of being identified as something. See, if you're not that something and you try to get out of that something as that something, yeah, you're going to be living as that something. The real freedom is realizing you're not that something. Yeah. So in a weird sense, the freedom that gets introduced to us, right, is the first experiences is after the bondage, but the real freedom is before the bondage. Hold on. The real freedom is before the bondage, yes? And a lot of times in the first years, you're, tra- you're getting all these experiences of being free from the bondage of self, but the real freedom is before the bondage. When you see that you're not that which is the act of binding us to self, there's a real, that's like the field of abstinence to me. That's like the, the, the image of that statement in the book of we will be placed in a position of neutrality. I think that position of neutrality is before self and resides in us, yeah? I don't think it's the relief and the fear that us gets when it gets out of self. I think it's the real freedom that us is before self, yeah? Yeah, so, and I think that's when that event that many of us go under, which is the problem does not exist for us today, it really stabilizes when the problem does not exist as us today. Yeah. Yeah. The problem can experience its own absence for a day or so. But when for that to stabilize, it has to be seen clearly that the problem doesn't exist as us. Yeah. Then you get into a stabilized experience of the problem doesn't exist for us (laughs) i feel so and this is just an observation of relief yeah i'm not hoping this is true i'm observing it i've observed it is true yeah and i'm sharing it with other people i'm not hoping it's true i had no idea i didn't all my ideas were formulated as self from self yeah now I have, I have the ideas about self. <laughs> yeah. And I do, I believe we're in the us category. We're not self. And if you see it in on that page, page 64, us implies a plural, 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 plural whatever. It's plural. It's a lot of us. Uh, I'm getting old, man. Um, but self implies a singularity, yes? So the, we haven't been defeated by many. We haven't been defeated by many. We have been defeated by a singularity, a sense of self, yeah? 
So that's what we come here for, I guess. I don't even know why. I just shit make I make shit up, I guess. But one of the things I feel like we come here is to keep uh, repeating these ideas so they gain traction, you know? So their their little their root their ability to root gets given some time where it can grab on. Yeah. Because if we're living the only way, we need perhaps there's a better way. And the better way is trusting infinite, the infinite instead of finite self. Yes? So obviously the old way is trusting finite self. The better way is trusting the infinite. That's the migration of recovery, yes? We're taken from trusting finite self and brought towards trusting the infinite. And as we do, we travel lighter through through whatever life has in store for us, yeah? And then we can share that with others, not as what we say, but as what we, where we're living from, yes? To me, where you are or what you are is speaks louder than what you say. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want a freedom uh, presented first as a uniform. Yeah. I think freedom is a free range of variety. Yeah. I feel, yeah. It may be you have to go to boot camp, but I don't want to live in boot camp. For 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be at attention every second. I want to be at ease. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Place, p- placed in a position of neutrality is another way of saying abstinence in a way to me, yeah. You're abstaining from being this or that, and then you find out a lot, yeah, about this and that. <laughs> so, yeah. Bill W. was like, you know, a lot of us, He had an active head, yeah? We want to get relief from it, don't we? People do almost anything. They'll watch Die Hard 11, even though they know the first 10 Die Hards sucked. They just will hope it will be better this time. I mean, it's just, uh, we're fucking, you know, I've done something and it didn't really work, but what the hell, I just keep doing it. (laughs) Maybe it'll work. Yeah, it's, uh, what's driving that? (laughs) Not an interest in boredom, really. We're just, something is agitated and it's compelling, you know, actions with a bad direction, really, yeah. But what happens if in recovery, I really feel, you know, a new attitude and new outlook and a new uh, happiness to me is a contentment and satisfaction. Yeah. Not earned or bought or or achieved, but noticed. Yeah. Sensed. So now I start from a satisfied content point instead of an agitated, irritable, restless point, yeah? And therefore, the trajectory of Paul goes in a completely different direction. Now, you want to may talk about will, self-will, or God's will, I don't care, really. I feel if the attitude and outlook changes, you're going to, your behavior is going to change, yeah? A new freedom and a new happiness is going to provoke new behavior, yeah, (laughs) yeah new interests it just is so trying to provoke new interests with the old attitude and outlook obviously doesn't stick well does it it always it may it may appear to be working but when the push comes to shove it usually fucking fails 
like they say, you know, self-knowledge avails us nothing. There's got to be uh, a letting go of all these old ideas. I don't think you as an old idea can let go of old ideas. <laughs> I just say, just see the old idea of you. <laughs> And then the other old ideas get shook off like a, like something, you know, you know, it's funny. I have this old truck. So when you're driving it like 10 miles per hour, it seems pretty solid. When you hit 40, it sounds like every fucking nut and bolt is flying. Every, it's just, it doesn't have, it gets very, very loud. Yeah. It's the same truck. But if you put it in a condition of more speed, it can't handle it. Yeah. So, yeah, everyone can be nice at a retreat for seven days. <laughs> everyone can be nice when the, the, the planes are on time. Let's we'll see what happens at the airport if people's planes get delayed. <laughs> All civility goes out the window quickly. <laughs> it's a fragile fra fragile uh condition yeah yeah so <laughs> i'm really happy to be here and i'm happy that we've all have taken to heart that there is a solution yeah and to be done with this whole idea of you know I've got to drink again or whatever it is. No. Yeah. So, hey, all right, thanks. Thanks, Jacob. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, your, the story you told, Paul's story, reminds me of, uh, it's like, from fuck it to I'm fucked. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. If I, think I, needed, I think I needed it that way, because if it would have come gradually, the head would have claimed every move, probably. But because it was such a switcheroo, the head got caught with its pants down. And uh, <laughs> it was just obvious that something had done and is doing for me what I couldn't do for myself. It was just too it was so obvious. It just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the head couldn't, you know, get its grubby hands on it. Yeah. Because I remember, you know, I lived many years, you know, hearing the echo of my mother's prayers in Long Island and with the cathedral and getting all her prayer meeting people to pray for their her son. All that, yeah. All of those times I saw my mother's face, she completely disappointed, yet I couldn't stop. Yeah, and yet something did it in a trailer park in Calistoga. Yeah, with a guy who I don't even, I never, I didn't know who he was and I haven't known who he was. <laughs> yeah, he was the last person basically that I saw while drinking. <laughs> I haven't seen another person in 34 years. <laughs> He was the last one. I can't even remember him. <laughs> That's sort of funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Serendipity. He was like he was at he was the one he uh, said goodbye to me as the ship was launched. The sober ship was launched. He was the last one I saw from you know Drunken Island. <laughs> hey, Paul, Paul, maybe maybe you imagined him. Maybe he wasn't even really there. Just imagine. Probably was. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. I... <laughs> I know, it's like it's like in the in the murder mystery. Who's the last person, the last one to see the victim alive? That's right. It's a, it's a trip. I never thought of it that way, but the last I've, one is the so other person I've seen since then. I've been so. <laughs> it's sort of funny. <laughs> wow, what a great gift, eh? To, for all intents and purposes, you th well, you didn't, but there was a throwing away of life, and yet 
uh, it, it was like the Australian boomerang. It came back, <laughs> hits you on the head and knocks some sense into you. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's wonderful to have that, uh, that sense of gratitude. The other day, we, uh, I have this old pickup. And so a lady was visiting us and we were gonna, we had to do a talk earlier on. So afterwards, we came back to the house. I took the truck out. We went to dinner, and uh, it doesn't have a parking brake. So I, I forgot that I put it in first gear. So we were, we were parked in front of a, a paint store with one of those big glass windows. And once I started it after dinner, it lurched over the curb and it was moving towards the window. <laughs> and Amelia was giving me one of her famous is, Watch out! <laughs> The other lady was saying nothing, but I, I, I turned it off, yeah? And it just stopped right before it hit the glass, yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, in my previous life, that would have not happened. It would have hit the thing, a fucking 20,000, you know, 30 gallon things would have fallen. I would have ran. <laughs> 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 and it would co it would create a lot of fucking consequences that I would feel I didn't deserve. <laughs> but thank you. It was so nice. It stopped like an inch before it hit the window. It was great. I obviously I put it into neutral and shit. But uh, <laughs> the opposite used to happen quite a lot when mm -hmm. I was out there it wouldn't stop. I wouldn't get the, the reprieve. It would hit the, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so I get so many of these, it just produces a lot of gratitude. I was happy for like a day of going, wow, that's so great because, you know, yeah. That's funny. So yeah, no. sorry. <clears throat> can, can I share any questions or Chris, do you have a time? Yeah. Or, or in the audio, I, I do. If um, I think a, it was uh, last week, Paul <laughs> Paul told me I should try to twice a day try to step out of the present and see what happens, and I I thought that was actually pretty amazing because. So he was just we just talk about these kind of fortuitous things that just seem to happen, and uh, so I was riding on on my bike noticing how strange it is when you say, well, I'm just going to leave the present. And then suddenly this part of me that always thought it kind of could suddenly realizes it can't, which is, which is really striking. And so I'm, I'm riding on on my bike and I, I had the thought I'm going to go, I'm riding down this wilderness road to the middle of nowhere. I'm like, never been down here before. I think I'll just go check it out. I get to the end and there's like this woman kind of pacing back and forth, totally in the middle of nowhere. And it turns out she's she's called for an Uber, but she thinks she gave them the wrong address and now her phone's dead. And she's just walking around going, oh my God, what am I gonna do, what am I gonna do? I'm like, oh, hey, take, take my phone, I'll get, you, I'll get you an Uber. So I get her an Uber, she's thanking me, it's, God bless you, all this. And she's trying to pay me, I'm like, it's fine. So she's, I gotta pay you, so she pays me. So I wait and the Uber shows up. She gives me this huge hug. She gets in the car and leaves. And I just go home. And it was less like, it just seemed like that's why I drove there. I don't know how else. Like, I drove out there to the middle of nowhere. I got this woman an Uber. And then I drove home. And part of me is trying to, like, make some, you know, story, amazing story out of that. Or what, what a great thing I did or whatever. But honestly, I wasn't actually feeling anything. <laughs> it's just... I was I was there for that yeah. <laughs> when it yeah. happened. <laughs> so it was cool. A lot of shit happens when you're here. <laughs> you're always here. Exactly. Yeah. Right? yeah. This idea of uh yeah. You know, there is a sense of duality here. Yeah. The way that this this if you want to call it an objective world is being interpreted from a subjective point, yes? 
yeah. that subjective point is fitted with a pair of glasses, you could call them duality. Yeah. So when we're doing one thing, we don't see the moving towards something. There's also a moving away from something. Yeah. Mm. And so this idea of I'm going to sit in the presence for five minutes to the head is inferring that it's out of the presence for 23 hours and 55 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. The problem isn't the idea of getting into the presence. It's the belief that you could be out of the presence. Yeah. These are the old ideas. Yeah. And yeah. when you said that thing, try to leave the present, it seems so stupid, but it, it suddenly hit me like, it's just instead of always yeah. yeah instead of always wanting to be present try to try to not be present that's right <laughs> and to see the head the head has really made up what's not happening yeah to occupy the present so the present in the presence there can, there is what's happening and then there's the mental what's happening and the mental what's happening if there's faith in the mental states is going to override or eclipse what's happening. So it yep. will be the dominant event and that event is predicated on what's not happening. Yep. <laughs> if that's that ain't playing God, I don't know what is. That's the and nightmare of my daily book. existence. You've got to quit playing God. What is that? Yeah. What is that? Having a mental... Safer. Well, that's that's all the bullshit. That's yeah, the mental, the security of the mental state uh, causes you to go fucking numb. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's not a it's not a, a life inducing security. Yeah, no. you get like dulled out and numb and afraid. Yeah. Well, yes, of course. No, the true security is finally admit you're not there's no security and then then you can live as if you're secure it's truly i feel yeah. so this I, is a tricky thing with the head the head occupies what's happening with what's not happening yeah 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 how could that happen unless we are actually what's happening the only thing that could replace what's happening with something else would be what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> what's not happening can't happen without what's happening. <laughs> Next week is not happening. It isn't. Right. It may be, let's say, next week, but it's not <laughs> happening. So the only way it can be happening is us. Yeah. You know, See the power that we are? That's why it says, uh, if you want to call it, there's already a God playing. There's got to be a quit playing God, see? There's uh -huh. a God playing, which is is the true direction. I don't like the word God, but I'll use it with this. And then there's the mental state playing God. Yeah. Yeah. There's already a there's already this thing playing, and then the mental state's reaction to that is, "I'm going to play God. I'm going to replace what's happening with what's not happening." Yeah, and a lot of us have been sucked up into that fulcrum. Yeah, and we're basically determined by imaginary effects. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is it's what I believe next week's going to be is my next week. Yeah. 100% true. Yeah, this is an addiction. This is the addiction in the mind. The addiction of alcohol and drugs is a really a misdirected solution to that addiction. Yeah. If you really want to be addictive free, that's where that's the root of all the addictions, because most addictions are a response to that addiction. Yeah, I want to enjoy a large amount of cake because it makes me feel better for a few minutes. Yes, because the, the, the time addiction is still occurring. 
So the other addictions were first found as a solution, obviously. Yeah? And then what happened? The thing took them over also. The thing that drove you to do, to have the cake, now is critiquing your eating the cake. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. The thing that drove you to shoot the dope is now lambasting you and criticizing you for fucking shooting the dope. Yes? It's incredible. It rides its own solutions to the to your grave. Yeah, it rides you. <laughs> yeah, here's a solution for you. Get high. <laughs> wow, it's working. And then 35 years with no teeth, you're living on Sixth and Market, living in a box, a refrigerator box. That solution obviously isn't expressing a relief from the problem anymore, is it? It's now been absorbed by the Borg, so to speak, and it's part of the problem. <laughs> it, it, seems, it seems to operate like this. It's like a very long dead end road with a lot of curves in it. So you keep thinking, well, maybe just around, maybe yeah, and you exactly. don't. You don't. <laughs> yeah. And it, what it does is it's really a loop and it changes the scenery. So you don't <laughs> realize, <I'm> <laughs> but sometimes it's, it forgets to move certain things and you're going, wait a minute, I saw that at lot, lot, lot five, lot eight, and then it gets really lazy and it's the same old, same old. And yet like, you just keep just running keep around. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Okay. I feel there's a mental addiction uh, that the addictions to any substance cannot do justice to. Because the mental addiction, you start from being the drug. Yeah, you think you are it. You start from being a self. I never I swear, I use it a lot because the, the most, the deepest pool I ever dove into of addiction was shooting cocaine, yes. And yet, I, even when I was swimming in that deep water, I never thought I was cocaine, never. Mm -hmm. I believe the mental addiction starts there. We're living from the cocaine, so to speak. We're living from this idea of self. <laughs> it's just that's, insane. And it doesn't matter. It's great that it's that potent because the, uh, the opposite potency is so strong. Yeah. When you can see that addiction at its root, the high, the power of the higher power is unbelievable. That's why I'm here because what you're describing is exactly what I'm seeing. Well, there you go. Well, well, I keep. Feel, keep I don't know what to do. Borrowing the glasses. <laughs> keep borrowing the glasses for a while. Yeah. <laughs> That's the point. Yeah. Okay. Because the point of this isn't to know it; it's to be relieved of it. Uh, yeah. I don't have much interest in knowledge of it yeah. unless it comes with relief from it. Yeah. yeah. So for me, the relief came and then the knowledge about it showed up. Oh, I see. Yeah. 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 It doesn't have to go that way. But in my case, relief came. And from that relief, I, I knowledge about what was causing or seemingly causing the unrelief became obvious. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah, yeah I, so I see what you're saying. The point is, isn't to know, uh, you, you know, people can be a professor of holes and they keep falling into them. It's no, <laughs> that's a, I, the relief is what I, I like. Yeah? yeah. And that can take any form. It's not a, it's not, it's, it's not a set uh, form of dance steps. It's improvisational, mm. which is beautiful. You can't retrace the steps to it because those steps didn't take you there. Where you are is an expression. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're inherently innately coming from that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So, and the relief has seemingly weathered a lot of years here. So I feel pretty confident in the message because <laughs> it's been through a lot of what you would call living. Yeah. yeah ups and downs, in and outs, this and that. And uh, it's been freaking, the funny thing is, 
the more obvious because it comes, the more reliable. Yeah, because you think the table's thin, so you don't set much down on it. But then you start realizing it's it's expanse, and then everything's put on it. Yeah, mm. it can That's basically great. hold anything. Yeah, so That's great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I want to let Michael get a chance. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, Thank Michael you. Stacey, want to come on in. Michael. There he is. Hey, Paul. Michael. Hey. Hey. Um, really appreciate you today, Paul. Appreciate you. And thank you to Jacob and to Carrie for, uh, for your service today. And, and, you know, Paul, I wanted to share with you, last week a friend sent me a, a link to a video, and the video was called The Zombie Fungus. And I clicked on the video, and I watched the video, and it just so happened to be about what you shared. About a year ago, you shared this story of, um, of what takes place in nature about the cordyceps. And it yeah. was a video on how this fungus attacked this little ant, and then it followed it around, and, and it drove the ant to a warm, dark space in the forest, and then it made the ant clamp down and, and just retire right there. And watching this video, and I was like, wow, that's like, Paul is so correct in this, that, 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 was, like, that was like the story of my life when it came to alcohol and drug addiction. And, um, and, and you shared about this a little bit earlier. You didn't say the word cordyceps, but, but like for me, that vision came about and it was so clear as to what took place. And, and I, just, I just wanted to share that with you. So thank you. Yeah. Instead of the dark place, it's institution, jails, and death. <laughs> it's those places. We all seem to get driven at least in the same direction. Most of us to the same destinations, but definitely all of us the same direction. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many examples in nature of parasitical uh, conditions. This case, and I remember I used to talk about it and people say, well, there isn't a parasite. I'm not talking about it. You can't see this. This is a mental parasite. Yeah. It does. It's not in form. It informs us as a form. Yeah. Yeah. And it uses us for expression and really as a vehicle for, of transportation, just like that, the old Candida story, that other thing that pe that grows in people that has an agenda. It likes flowery, whitish, sugary things. So, and obviously it can't go to the bakery. It's sort of, it's found in you. So it has to use you to get to the bakery, to get the, the uh, chocolate croissant, yeah? The funny thing is, it's we're so susceptible to being taken over. We'll write a story about how we how much we love chocolate croissants and make it a whole thing when we're we're actually being driven by some bug in our intestinal tract to go get its food. <laughs> I mean, the the parasitical movement has found the greatest host, us, because whatever comes through us, there's going to be a story up, made up about it, it's us. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's insane. It truly is. It's insane. Yeah. I don't even know, you know, I've come to find out I love to do this thing. No, you are compelled to do this thing. Yeah. <laughs> And the head writes up a narrative with you as the star, and then you're just going along with it, yeah, because it's all about me. <laughs> ah. To me, it's slavery, really. Slavery, yeah, bondage. What does bondage imply? A certain slavery, right? The bondage of self is a form of slavery. So the us gets enslaved to this idea of self. How is that? Where, where the problem resides in the mental activity. So we're bonded to an idea that can be quite suffocating. It's quite claustrophobic for us, yeah? 
But once the possibility through identification, the possibility of being free from it is taken away, then it has a field day because every opportunity and every action you do to get free from it, you're trying to be free as it, yeah? You see it? It's very important to see the the click of the lock of bondage of self is the act of being identified as. If you're identified as self, then you're going to try to get out of self as self, which is a form of bondage. Yeah. When you see you're not that, the possibility of being free from it becomes available. Not the poss- all the possibilities that tons of places try to show us of you can be free from it for a half hour or free as it for a 10 minutes. Yeah. But no, a freedom from it because it's not of you. Yeah. Yeah. Let's say it's not of all of you. It may be an aspect of you, but it ain't the whole. It's like, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of other possibilities. Obviously, attitudes and outlooks are not singular if you can have a new one. Yeah. Freedom and happiness, there's not just one freedom and happiness if you can have a new freedom and happiness. Yes? So under bondage, you have an old idea of freedom and happiness. I want to do everything I want to do, let's say. Yeah, you get relieved of that. Now, new freedom and uh, attitude and outlook. I don't know what it's going to look like for you. That's the joy of it, yeah? But it's amazing when you when you slip yourself into something and it fits. It feels fucking weird because before, then you realize how much you were scrunched into shit, how much you were jammed into stuff, yeah? And then you've just taken it to be the way it is, yeah? But once you get, all right, here's another thing, but then you go in and it fits. It's beautiful. It's nice to wear it, you know, there's like, just like a t-shirts. I have lots of t-shirts. There's some that just fit. Yeah, better than others. So I'm drawing, and when I put them back on after a few weeks, I go, wow, I like this t-shirt because it fits. It just gives the right space, yes? Yeah. Yeah. So, A new attitude, a new outlook, a new happiness, a new freedom. Rooted in, obviously, your life is an expression of the trust in the infinite instead of the trust in finite self. Isn't it? Yeah, really? Yeah. Let's say you're you're a brush and you're full of paint. Yeah. It's going to be what directs that brush and paint is what's going to make the picture. The brush and paint is going to make a picture, but what's going to move it, direct it, is going to make what the picture is. Yes? We're being used by an old employer or a new employer, but basically we're going to be used. This event, we are not the user. We are that which is used. Yeah? And you can tell the difference, obviously, because we're sentient. There's an awareness, there's a consciousness, so we can know, we can feel what's using us by, you know, like Jesus says, you know the tree by the fruit, yeah? So by the fruit in your life, by the, all the stuff that accumulates, how you deal with the people yourself and all that stuff, you can see the reflection of what's doing it by its, by the fruits. Yeah. That's how you recognize the new employer. And then through the new employer, you really recognize the old employer. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, anyone else, Jacob, anybody? I don't see any other hands, hands Paul. Is it time yet? Oh, yeah. Why don't we say goodbye? eh?
Yeah. Yeah, that was a great talk. Also, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to announce some things. Well, today we have a meeting on another topic at 4.30 Pacific time. And then Saturday, we usually have a Zoom at 1. We're also going to have a Zoom at 10 California time in the morning. I'm speaking at a, a retreat for some group in Maryland on Zoom. So we're going to use our Zoom room. So at 10 in the morning, Saturday, we'll be having a Zoom also. Sweet. Yeah, I don't know how they're going to conduct it, so we may just be observers of it. Who knows? But if you want to come, it's available. So it's we'll put it up. I think Mike will put it up, or, or it may be put up already, but not. It will be up there by Thursday, and then it'll be easy. It'll be through our Zoom room, same one, and we'll have the one o'clock one too. Yeah. Sweet. That wasn't confusing. It's clear. Not at all. Yeah. It's funny when certain people love to go to spiritual esoteric meetings, trying to incredibly understand these complex ideas. And then you just give them like the direction to the meet the next meeting and they can't fucking get it, you know? So you have to be super clear. Yeah. Yes. Well, 10 a.m., 1, 1 p.m., Zoom, 10 and 1. Yeah, I've noticed really. I swear, you have to be very, very clear with directions. All right, so thanks. Nice to see both of you there, Jacob and Alex. Fantastic. Michael, Stacy, always good. Uh, Walter, Anu, we got Kurt. Kurt just slipped me some cash while I was sitting here. I sort of like that, it's nice. Joseph, always a pleasure. Kristen, there she is somewhere in the Philadelphia area. We got Al holding the fort down in Las Vegas oh. with Albert and uh, who is he, Yoda? Yes. Chris, nice to see you, bro. Yep. That's the whole point in AA is sort of, uh, it's not about our gender, uh, it's about us being of maximum use to ourselves and others. So you were of maximum use to that lady the other day. For yeah. Sure, yeah. Yeah. So a condition that you are open to or as allowed you to be of maximum use. That's fucking great. Yeah. Yeah. We got, uh, I'm going to say it, Haley. I think Haley's, I got it down now. Yes, there she is. Tom, nice to see you. Carrie, as always, Hawaii. Mickey, Jonathan, Mickey, the matriarch of Madeira. Yes. Jonathan, nice to see you, my friend. Catherine in Maine. Yep. Stefan in having never left. Roman sitting in Germany. He doesn't have to sit near the radiator anymore. It's summer. We got Annette. There she is. Deborah. Uh, let's see. We got Nina. Oh, Nina. Oliver. Amy. Amy uh, changed the hair there. It's very nice. I always want to tell her, stay out of the street there, but she seems to be out of it right now. We got Lucas, Kate, David B. We got Steve from San Diego. Nice to see you, Steve. Uh, let's see, we've got, I got Jonathan, Annette, I think I've got everybody. Uh, if I missed you, um, we haven't missed you. Lucas, yep. All right, thanks everyone. Oh, uh, wait a minute, we've got Judith uh, and some other people. It's weird, why do the Zoom things keep moving? Because people are leaving. Oh, they're leaving, that's why. Oh, there's Judith. See, that was a simple answer. Now I know. It's when people leave that things go. Hmm. All right, thanks. I'll see, I'll see everybody. See hopefully some of you today. Thank you, Paul. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank Paul. You.